Thank you. Hi, awesome. everybody. My name is Lynn Marie Angus. I am the owner of Sisters Sage. Um, and I have just been uh, announced as the one of the 24 ventures for Shigeo this year. Woo! Um, <laughs> Sister Sage is an indigenous <laughs> brand. Um, we're located on the unceded territories of the Kakite First Nation in what is now known as New Westminster, British Columbia. Um, <clears throat> what I do is I take my traditional culture and knowledge and ingredients and create modern self-care and wellness products like soaps, uh, salves, uh, smokeless smudge sprays and bath bombs. Nice to see you all. Amazing. Thank you, Lynn Marie. Patrice, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Patrice Musso. I am the owner creator of Satya Organics. I am Anishinaabe from Northwestern Ontario, born and raised in Sulacout and from Fort William First Nation. I have a venture. I was a part of CEO as one of the second ventures or second year ventures here in Canada. And uh, I've been an activator every year since, and that's four years. So I've been with CEO for five years. Uh, my product and company, it, we develop skincare for people who don't want to use steroids for skin issues. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll take a quick moment to introduce myself. In Jawat and Squash Kawea. My ancestral name is Kawea. My English name is Echo. I'm from the Inflagatmak Nation, uh, raised with the Shishak Nation, and I currently live and work on the traditional Pentlatch territory on Vancouver Island. My business is Sacred Matriarch Creative digital media and performance storytelling, woven with ancestral knowledge and sacred space facilitation. Uh, so I have a few questions and I'll just move through them and we can kind of uh, explore some dialogue. But before we do that, um, for anyone uh, who's a part of the circle right now who may have missed Tira's uh, speech yesterday, we are all a part of the Indigenous Lift Collective and that coincides with CEO uh, co-creating the conditions for Indigenous women entrepreneurs to thrive. So that's how I met these two beautiful, beautiful, wonderful humans, and I'm so grateful to be here with you today. Uh, so the first question is, uh, what does it mean to you to decolonize? Who's first? Marie, first? <laughs> okay, I'll go first. Then. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I love this question. Um, Decolonization, I think more like re recently has become a, a hashtag, but really it's more than a hashtag. Um, it's really a movement to, uh, to the undoing of the patriarchal harmful effects of colonization. And for me as an indigenous person, decolonization is really a way of life. It's what I was born into. Um, as indigenous people, we were legislated uh, to genocide and we were not supposed to be here today. So we're here today, we're still here. And so just me being alive is my act of decolonization. But even more so than that, um, I feel like decolonization is being involved in my culture and, um, and sharing that also. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you. Patrice? Yeah, um, for me, decolonization is really about the system that we live in. Um, this happens when, you know, colonizers came in and they set up their way of doing and being um, and pushed that on everyone. And it definitely had, of course, detriments to Indigenous people, but also to women and children and elders and everybody who was other. Um, so decolonization isn't just about Indigenous people. It's about all of us saying that this system that was set up doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I agree with both of you. Uh, decolonization work is the dismantling of the stale pale males. Go on. Well <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Wait. a system that was not designed to help anyone other than the stale pale males. Um, mm -hmm. I'm over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so ready to create something new um, mm -hmm. and ancient because we have ancient teachings and technology that already have been leading the way for thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of years. And it's yeah. just returning to that. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. Um, how do you operate your business through your indigenous teachings? Go ahead, Limery. Okay. Um, this is, it's like a pretty deep question because I think 
in so many ways I do. First of all, I'll talk about my products themselves. Um, yeah, one of the missions of Sister Sage is to really use my products as a vehicle to promote um, education about Indigenous people and culture. And so what I do is in many of my products, I go out and I harvest ethically as per Indigenous protocol, our medicines, and then I add those into my product. And so by doing that, it gives me the opportunity to speak about the medicines and share about that culture. Um, and more so, uh, here I actually have a soap. Here's one of my moon soaps. And so every month I'll make a new moon soap. But um, again, it's a vehicle for me to, to teach about uh, Indigenous ways of knowing um, about the moon cycles and why it's important to us. So that's just one way. But another way that I, I like to... Um, like incorporate my culture into my business is um, by creating a safe space for women to come and work. And um, I, you know, I was involved in the stale male pale uh, life and um, construction, and that was really not conducive to myself, uh, to my growth as an Indigenous woman, or just even as a woman that I, you know, spiritually, culturally, um, emotionally, mentally, I think I was brought like torn down in so many ways by being in that toxic culture. Um, so it, having that as my background was really a catalyst for me to create a safe space for women to come and work. Amazing, amazing. Patrice? Yeah, of course. Um, so of course, you know, my products, um, I actually created them based on academic studies, traditional medicine, and the existing medical research. So, and that that's who we are, right? We're not just uh, a single facet as a person, like we are multiple things. And that, I see that reflected in my products. Um, and the business model that I have, uh, we are all women or non-binary uh, people in the company. We all work on our own time. Um, nobody has a nine to five. Everybody, pretty much everybody in the company is a caregiver. Either they have children that they care for or elderly parents that they have to take care of. And that's the priority. If something is going on with the family or whatever, it's like, go. No question. We all have your back. Somebody had a baby. They're gone for a while. Not a big deal because we, we work as a family and we don't, see pe we don't see people as doing one job, we see people as their whole selves um, within the company. And I am so proud of what I've, what I've managed to create because this family, I'm so proud of the people that I work with. Um, and one of the things I, I talk about with this is a more traditional way of looking at things is we have all been brought up with a hierarchical uh, pyramid of, you know, where the power flows down. Whereas I always say that we switch it as an indigenous people as to a, a table and everybody has a voice and equal power and something to contribute at that table, be they your elders or your children or, you know, the two spirited person, everybody is bringing a unique perspective and that b builds strength and power. And if you're only hearing from one voice, obviously we all know it's weak. Um, so that's something we do. Also, um, it's very important for us to have um, respect for the environment we're very cognizant of any kind of waste that we're creating. Our packaging is very environmentally sustainable. It's all either reusable or compostable. Um, and that's, it was never a marketing thing. It was just the, what we did. But what I want to, I do want to talk about, I hope I'm, it's okay if I veer off a little bit, is a bit about um, trauma. I feel like we as women uh, building our businesses have been traumatized. Uh, it's been so difficult for all of us to create our business, regardless of, of our backgrounds. Um, we have to work twice as hard to get half as far, right? So when somebody says to you, we need to not deal with scarcity, we need to think about decolonization, it's exhausting, right? Because we think about, oh, God, I have, have to do something else now, right? Yeah. But that is the, the way the system has taught you to see things 
If you can actually just sit back and go, what do I really want my business and my life to look like? How do I want to feel as I move through the world? Then that can be very freeing. You need to free yourself from that uh, uh, colonization mindset in institutions in order to find that freedom to be able to create the world that we need it to be. Amazing. That's so good. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We'll just do a mic drop right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. And oh, yes, trauma, trauma, trauma. It all stems from that as well. And um, yeah, that's a whole other topic that needs to be addressed first. It's like truth, then reconciliation. We have to address the trauma from colonization before we can work towards building new systems. Mm. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, so I just want to be mindful of our time. We have two more questions. Um, so, okay. Uh, so I think the, the last question ties into the one we just did. So we'll do the next one based off your learnings, um, and exploring as an indigenous owned, uh, uh an indigenous business owner, what tips or advice would you give to someone, and Patrice, you just gave some amazing ones, uh, to start to decolonize their own business model? Um, I can go. Um, for myself, I feel like I have encountered, not a lot, but some lateral violence where, you know, some people are not happy that I'm sharing about our culture. Um, some people are not happy that I wasn't Cultural, cultural enough that I'm, I'm not Indian enough. I'm too Indian, and so I think a, a good piece of advice is just to not listen to that. Um, for me, culture isn't static, and we are the future ancestors, and we are creating culture right now. And so we're like, a, a, we're just changing it organically. And so me bringing to to uh, to the front my uh, modern self care products. Um, I can't please everybody, but I'm here doing what I feel is most important and I'm showing up authentically and with my integrity. And I think that's really important as a business owner. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes, I can. I can. Um, so, again, getting back to this idea of trauma and we all have trauma and mm -hmm. the way that I'm able to get past that and through that, because. I'm a single mom, I'm indigenous, I'm running my own business. I got a lot of, I got a lot of weight on me, but I make it through, through community, through my friendships, through CEO. CEO is my family. Like I yeah. would not be where I am without the people in this network who have had my back from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where our power is in community and being together and supporting each other because we all know it's very lonely to be an entrepreneur, but if you start having people that have your back and support you, you can do anything. You can let go of all that old system and create a world that you want it to be. Absolutely. The, I, uh, the yeah, the self-care um, that's been centralized a lot in like healing communities, it's leaving out a huge, huge piece. It's community care. Yes. Um, which is absolutely central. As mothers, <laughs> we need a community to raise our babies. It's so, so important. And the same with businesses, raising businesses and babies. It requires community care. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, uh, it's such a great piece of advice is like involve yourself in community and find your network of women because I found you both and a whole like community and CEO and within the Lyft Collective and the Lyft Circle and we're all just looking to love and lift each other. And what we need to do is normalize love within our businesses. And um, I want to echo this uh, quote from Rian Eisler that just happened. Caring policies are good for nations. And I think we all need to do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, there's one more piece I want to offer is that the natural world already teaches us everything we need to know. So when our ancestors were out in nature, they knew that everything they needed was provided for them. So in decolonizing my own business model, I'm returning to the natural world and looking at what are the seasons. So when a seed is planted in the ground, it has its rest period where it's dark and it's quiet. And then it breaks out of its shell 
it starts to begin to grow roots, it sprouts up. And then, you know, as we move through the springtime, it's, it starts, the shoots start to come up. And then as we move into summertime, it starts to flower. And then into the fall, it sheds. So we have these natural cycles that we can follow within our own lives and our own businesses. Um, so I'm looking at uh, plant medicine. What is the medicine of my business through the different seasons? And how can I follow that? How can I honor that? Um, the other thing that I've been doing is breaking down um, well-being in business. So my business has its own spirit. It has physical well-being, mental well-being, emotional well-being, and spiritual well-being. How does it move? How does it think? How does it act? How does it thrive? How does it connect? So looking at all those ways, instead of the, the regular business language totally throws me off. I've like been totally lost trying to <laughs> find my way with that. So no, once I found I, you're like the you're mega anti right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a really I've been in my like rest season of my like planting my seed and just dreaming things so I have this whole wall of like what does this look like when I return to the natural world and what is it teaching me uh, <laughs> mega <laughs> we have a new hashtag <laughs> um but yeah it's, thank you both so much I think um do we want to open up a little bit of space for a question or two uh sure Sure. Okay. okay cool. I, and I can I just I can just share a little bit of advice that my elder told me that I just I want to be able to share to people. You want to connect with nature. You're stressed out. You're freaked out. Um, and this is also I was thinking about like what is that? What does the the skyline look like? And it's about community spaces. It's about literally mm -hmm. putting your feet on the ground, and that is so healing and so calming to just not. I'm not talking about cement or anything. Like literally, get your feet on the earth. And that's going to actually give you a, a really good um, stress release. So I recommend that to anyone. Um, okay, there's a question here. Could you please give us some ideas of where we might have blind spots in decolonizing our business model as a white Canadian entrepreneur? Really? Um, um, sorry, yeah, Bruce. No, no. Uh, I don't know if it's a blind spot, but for me, it's giving back. And that's really like how I try to measure my impact is giving back. And that's my success. Absolutely. Patrice? Um, yeah, I would think, you know, and, and to borrow from B, um, getting rid of this idea of scarcity, getting rid of um, the trauma, just sit with it, feel it, mm. and, and see how it feel, what it feels like to create the business that you want. Um, paying people as much as they deserve, uh, mm -hmm. trying to do environmentally friendly packaging. Totally. Um, you yeah. know, just trying to tr imagine what you imagine what you want it to be, and then see if it's actually um, possible. And I think it probably Amazing. is. Yeah. Yes. Twenty minutes yes. is not enough time. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank build you your all. communities. Oh, Stay God. together. Yep. And learn your Indigenous community. Who is the localized Indigenous knowledge? And please ask the people in that community how to pronounce the names of yeah. where you live. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, build, build, build connection. Bye. <laughs>